Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this panel and thanks for including uh, Central European perspective into this uh, uh, anniversary panel, although as we uh, we heard, there was nobody uh, from Central Europe from Central Europe among funding members. So let me just uh, start with a very brief uh, history of Central European ethnology, because I, I think this is uh, an, its main concerns. Because I think this uh, this is an important con context for contemporary role of EASA in, in Central Europe. So ethnology or ethnography, ethnographia narodopis ethnographia, where ethno ethnography is a discipline, not, not only a method. So et ethnology or ethnography de developed in Central Europe in 19th century and as, as a discipline interested in folklore, uh, social organization, customs, uh, peasant culture, and it was also strictly combined with historical studies. Most ethnograph ethnographer conduct ethnographers conducted their uh, fieldwork uh, at home, which was defined as Slavic countries plus Hungary and uh, Baltic states. And, and they also believed that their personal experiences, their life stories as Slavs would give them a special insight into the Slavic uh, peasant cultures. But also there were some people in 19th century and the first, uh, first part of the 20th century uh, who did their field work uh, abroad in Asia and Africa. But these two uh, branches of ethnology were developed together in the same department. So, uh, and I think that those people working, those eth ethnologists or ethnographers working in 19th century they, or in the beginning of the 20th century uh, were really interested what was going on in the West, in Germany, uh, uh, German, British, and American works were very uh, promptly translated into Polish, Czech, or other languages. For instance, Morgan's Ancient Society was translated into Polish just. Uh, ten years after uh, first English edition, and Poland wasn't their uh, independent country back then. So I think it, it showed the importance of uh, this dialogue. And uh, what I think is very important to stress he here that early ethnographers were not only collectors of traditional customs, but also public intellectuals who were engaged in uh, various social problems. And I'm not talking about the, uh, this, this was also, of course, the, the issue, but I'm not talking only about ethnographers who contributed to the nation building processes throughout the region in the 19th century, but also I would like to give you some examples of uh, public engagement of uh, Central European scholars uh, in, b before the World War II. So th these are examples from Poland. Sorry, uh, to, uh, I apologize my um, Central European colleagues to, to use so many Polish examples. So for instance, Jan Stanisław Bystron was a well-known critic of nationalism, anti-Semitism, and xenophobia, and he really drew on his own uh, work, historical and ethnographic, to, to show uh, problems uh, around national identity, and he was a very harsh critic of anti-Semitism in the 1930s in Poland. And then that was Cezary Abodwan and Kreuz Jędrzejewiczowa, the founder of my, my department in Warsaw, who was deeply involved in developing educational opportunities for women, as well as opportunities for pe economic opportunities for peasants. And that was really related also to her, uh, her own work. Uh, so today we would call them public, uh, public anthropologists, public uh, intellectuals. And there was also Kazimira Zawistowicz Adamska, who was really engaged in, um, uh, she was like a typical engaged anthropologist, but she did her work in the 1930s. And she worked on issues such as social, uh, social exclusion, and she really uh, discussed with her uh, informants uh, what's the goal of the research. So she, we could call her um, an engaged anthropologist. But after World War II, uh, socialism strongly limited any public debates and also uh, an intellectual exchange with scholars from another uh, side of the Iron Curtain. However, eth ethnologists or ethnographers made their best to uh, uh, maintain some international interest and to know what's going on elsewhere, and they did not limit themselves to obligatory Marxist-Leninist uh, doctrine. So, uh, 
we have a lot of translations of international work uh, of Malinowski, I don't know, Levi Strauss, and also, I don't know, uh, Sherry's ordinary feminist anthropologist manifesto is male to female as nature to culture was also translated under communism into Polish. So, but what, but I'm not saying that Central European ethnology was some kind of perfect discipline uh, before 1989 because it really needed uh, a reform. And certainly what was missing was the lack of free exchange of thought within the academia, the lack of possibility to ask research questions which had real social relevance, the lack of ability to act on them. Uh, and th that I think what was missing also was the, the global, pers glo global critical perspective, we could say. But as uh, an important figure of Polish ethnology under communism, Zofia Sokolewicz says, I remember white, widespread fear over, sorry, I remember widespread overwhelming fear of being interrogated and arrested. We collected data which did not say anything about uh, crucial problems of Polish peasants back then. People were not eager to talk about them. We didn't ask. So all those problems of Central European uh, ethnology after the World War II were, were related to the totalitarian uh, regime, socialist regime. So, uh, and what happened in the, uh, in the 1990s when uh, the Iron Curtain fell, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, back then ethnologists uh, or anthropologists uh, look, took a very strong Western orientation. So local traditions were forgotten because I, I, I wanted to show you uh, this tradition of Central European anthropology in order to stress that uh, Today we often tend, tend to think that there was nothing before 1999 and only with the uh, uh, Western influence uh, anthropology or ethnology started in Central Europe and this is, this is not true. Anyway, in the 1990s a lot of, a lot of uh, anthropologists or ethnologists in Central Europe uh, took the Western orientation and they only, they used Western, uh, British or Western European or American uh, anthropology in their teaching and uh, there was a lot of translations and everything what was Western was perceived as, uh, as, as better and we should catch up with uh, uh, what was going on in the West. So here, uh, here comes the ASA. So the, because as we heard the year of the, uh, of the fall of communism in Central Europe is the year of foundation of ASA. So what was the role of this organization in reshaping ethnology in Central Europe and what is the role or possible role of anthropology in reshaping intellectual climate in Central Europe? So, um, as we heard, no Central European scholar was among funding members. However, gradually, I think ASA became a very important field, uh, a very important space for Central European scholars to network and to exchange ideas. And as we can see now, there's really a lot of uh, a lot of members from Central Europe, a lot of panels uh, uh, dedicated to Central European ethnology. And it was also possible thanks to the Werner Grant Foundation uh, funding, which we all received. Thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, yeah, uh, so let me just uh, and uh, let me just show the two spaces in which Central uh, Central European uh, um, in, in which ASA influenced Central European ethnology. So first one is uh, very obvious. It's networking. So ASA gave the space for. Uh, for exchange of ideas, for meeting not only with Western scholars but also within Central Europe. So I personally met all Polish uh, anthropologists from other cities on NASA con conferences, but I also uh, you also had the chance to get in touch with people working on, uh, I, I work on gender and sexuality, working on this issue in other, other, uh, other contexts. So, so networking space is very, is very important. And when it comes to networking within, between Central European scholars, there's also, I have to say about it, there's also a lot of uh, complaining uh, that uh, we are not acknowledged enough by our uh, Western, uh, Western colleagues, so we keep discussing these hierarchies of knowledge. Uh, 
Um, but, uh, but I think also what the ASA gives us is a uh, possibility and encouragement to publish in English and there's a lot of uh, publications uh, thanks to uh, ASA workshop uh, works and there's the book uh, by uh, uh, Laszlo Kurti and Peter Skalnik, post-socialist Europe, anthropologist perspective from home, but also other, other works uh, by Central European scholars on Central Europe, uh, which resulted from NASA workshops. But what is more important is the intellectual level of uh, what uh, ASA brought intellectually to Central European ethnology. Many, uh, many commentators of social and economic processes in Central Europe are very eager, uh, eager worshippers of neoliberalism and the doctrine of the catch up, of, uh, catch up with the West, which is so widespread, it, it's everywhere. Uh, feminists say that we have to catch up with the West, anthropologists used to say that we have to do it, politicians, economics, uh, economists, and so on. And, and I think anthropologists has a great tools to critique this approach and to show processes of knowledge constructions and processes uh, which are behind this cut up doctrine. Uh, and as I said, what was missing in central, central European anthropology uh, or ethnology under communists was a global critical perspective and comparative, comparative global perspective which would be critical. And the role uh, of EASA here is crucial to bring those ideas and put them into dialogue with local, uh, uh, local ideas. And I think many, uh, many scholars in Central Europe, many anthropologists in Central Europe uh, uh, look for alternative interpretation of transition, socialism, neoliberalism, east-west divide, migration, technology, or gender, thanks to this uh, exchange which is going on here. Uh, uh, on EASA uh, conferences, um, and and I think and as we, this this is a kind of uh, 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 this uh, 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 Central European tradition of ethnology to do fieldwork at home, but I, but I think thanks to this exchange here. Central European anthropology has a chance to come back to its uh, public engagement, its tradition to, of uh, uh, being public discipline and to contribute to, uh, to local debate. So uh, to combine, uh, uh, to combine uh, engage anthropology tradition, which is in central, so important in Central Europe with comparative and critical perspective which was born, which was missing under communism and was born and, mm, in meetings like this. So just to conclude for the future of anthropology in Central Europe, I hope that collabor collaboration, debates, networking uh, possible thanks to ASA will help us to stop complaining about what others think of us and help us to focus on doing good ethnography to renew the tradition of engagement and public anthropology thanks to the global and also European exchange of thought and will help us to focus on our responsibility to towards people we study and to engage in issues of social justice. And I hope uh, we manage to uh, combine elements of Western and Eastern anthropologists for the benefit of uh, people we study and for the better understanding of human uh, societies and culture. Thank you.